Every year, without fail, the video I'm shooting right now just ends up popping off every single CES like clockwork. And something tells me this one's gonna be no different. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and we are here at Samsung's booth touring the massive display that Samsung has put together, uh, full of TVs and all kinds of other goodies. And I think this is gonna be another banger year for Samsung. There is so much stuff packed into this display, I'm actually having a difficult time keeping it all in my head, which is gonna have to work out okay because we're gonna go modular. We're gonna go from one station to the next station to the next station. I'm gonna show you as much as I can. But before I get into that, I need to make a couple of things clear. There are certain things that have been announced officially within Samsung's press release. And we have printed that out um, with a news post at digitaltrends.com. So as we go through this area, I'm going to be able to show you some technology that is definitely a thing and definitely going to be sold in the US and North America and other areas in 2024 and some other things that are presently still a concept, right? So they may be a product in 2024. They may not be a product in 2024. We just don't know for sure. So I'll try to make distinctions as we go through all these different products about what you definitely will be able to buy and what you might be able to buy. Of course, we don't hear about pricing and, and technical availability until later this spring. I feel like I have to mention that in every video because everybody wants to know how much is it gonna cost? We don't know until probably around, oh, I'm gonna say March, April, May at the worst. Okay, got all that out of the way. Now, let's start with what's right behind me. Of all the TVs that are here, this is the one that's just capturing my eye the most. And well, actually, I think it's what's not catching my eye that's really making the difference here. As you may have heard, there is an S95D Quantum Dot OLED uh, in Samsung's lineup. They also have an S90D and an S85D, maybe. A little bit of a surprise there. We'll get to that in a moment. But the S95D will be the flagship Samsung OLED this year. And the standout feature of this particular television is its anti-glare treatment. This treatment that they have given this TV, it's like where light goes to die. I don't know how better to put it. Now in this particular room, they've got two fake windows flanking each side of the televisions. We've got a conventional QD OLED on my left as I face it, your left, and then we have the new 2024 Samsung S95D QD OLED on the right. And it's just obvious. We're gonna roll the B-roll here so you can have a look for yourself. Uh, it, there's virtually no glare. Now, if I go to an extreme angle here uh, and I look at the TV from right off to the side, I can see a sort of light sheen of light, but there is no definition to the light. I can't tell that it's coming from a window. I suppose that if I had a flashlight, it would just look like a dull sort of blur. It's remarkably effective. The days of talking about how OLED is not suitable for a bright room environment kind of feel like that's done. Not only are we getting excellent uh, white brightness, but also excellent color brightness out of OLED TVs. And now with this anti-glare treatment, it is fantastic. Naturally, I think the thing that folks are gonna be most concerned about is when you move into an anti-glare thing, you lose the glossy sheen on the television. You lose some of the luster or almost wetness that you get. I've spent a fair amount of time looking at both of these TVs, and while there's definitely a little bit of a difference to the glossy OLED, I don't feel like there's a massive substantial loss to that sort of wetness, that luster coming off of the one with the new anti-glare panel. I will say, I think it's gonna be more beneficial to have that anti-glare in place than what few little uh, sacrifices you may give to the overall uh, picture. Also, in case you're wondering, it's well lit in here. These are QD OLED TVs. And no, I'm not sitting here thinking, well, you know, that doesn't look like true black. A little bit of a gray cast, not happening. These displays look absolutely fantastic. And of course, they're kind of my favorite. So that's why I've spent a lot of time here. But there are so many other displays that we have to get to. Let's move over to the next one. I am now surrounded by more Samsung OLED TVs. On your right would be the 77-inch S90D OLED, and on your right would be the 83-inch S90D OLED. Now, Samsung's not talking about whether they've gone to a Samsung Display QD OLED panel for this particular display. Got up close with it, uh, macro style on my phone, and took a look at the pixel structure, and to me, uh, it looks like it's still WRGB. Uh, but this is, just, this is just CES here. That could change. So we'll know more, officially speaking, when these TVs are actually released 
uh, to the wild. But I mean, they look absolutely fantastic. Now, as a reminder, the key distinction between the S90D and S95D this year in 2024 is going to be both the One Connect box on the S95D as well as that anti-glare treatment. With the S90D, you don't get the anti-glare, uh, but it's still a gorgeous OLED TV. And you don't get the One Connect box, which depending on your opinion, may actually be a benefit. Also of big benefit is the more affordable price point. But speaking of more affordable price points, we got another unexpected display here. There is a 65 inch S85D sitting here. Uh, Samsung has said they wanna provide more options within their OLED TV lineup, and this is certainly going to do that. Now, this is not like the S89C, which was kind of a one-off kind of, uh, how do you put it? It was just kind of a, a one-off clone of the S90C of last year. This is a completely new line of TV, and it's got a really interesting, slim look. So instead of having a bump out on the back, it is just a nice, smooth back, almost kind of a rubbery texture back there. I really like it. Um, now, as the S85D, I do expect that its price point will be down a little bit lower. Details on this TV, other than that, I have none. Uh, we're gonna have to wait to find out more about this, but that's kind of the excitement of CES, right? Is that we come here, we look beyond the press releases, and we see some of the stuff that Samsung's working on. So this is a TV that I really hope that we see in stores in 2024. This is Samsung's The Music Frame, and it's a speaker that looks like a piece of art. When I say it like that, it doesn't seem like a revolutionary idea, but it really is super cool. So you can get all kinds of different art to go right here. You remove this, and what you'll find is behind this is a speaker system. There are two tweeters and two mid-range drivers. I realize that I probably shouldn't have taken this particular thing apart. I may get in trouble for that. That's cool, we'll figure it out later. On the back of this are a couple of woofers. Now these are smart things enabled. Uh, they're basically a Wi-Fi capable speaker, but you can also use them as a surround speaker with uh, select Samsung soundbars because they have the Q-Symphony feature built right in. So you can have your soundbar, you can have your subwoofer up front, and then instead of having speakers somewhere, you gotta figure out where to put them behind you, you can have the music frame as a surround speaker. I just love that idea. It makes sense as just a speaker around the house that kind of doesn't look like a speaker, but to be able to have your surround speakers kind of disappear into the decor, I like that a lot. You know how you can upload your Instagram photos and the next thing you know, you have a piece of canvas art at home. You can actually do the same thing with the music frame. You can print your own photos or artwork and have that as part of the speaker. Now back to the Samsung frame that we all know and love. You guys know that last year I was absolutely blown away by the new matte finish that they put on the frame TV. Still blown away by it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. This year, the frame doesn't get a complete uh, technological overhaul necessarily. I, and that's okay by me because uh, that new matte finish, that'll do me for a couple of years. But there are some new features that are coming to the frame this year. One of them is that they got a new Pantone uh, color certification. So even more accurate colors coming off the frame TV. Also, uh, there's some energy efficiency uh, changes that have been made. So it's a more energy efficient uh, television and display. And then uh, finally, there is a new streaming art feature. So another source of artwork to put up on the frame, uh, just opening up the options. I'm telling you guys, this is like the sleeper hit every single year is the frame TV. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Now, I haven't had a chance to <laughs> ask them some deep questions that I've seen in the comments about what's gaming like on the frame and you know, are there gonna be gaming features? Can you use Gaming Hub on the frame and whatnot? Haven't been able to get into that and that's a little bit deep for CES, but trust me, we will be digging into that. This will be the first year that I ask for a frame TV for actual review. Um, and we're gonna have some fun with it and see what happens. All right, that's it for the frame. There's one more thing I have to show you. Guys, I'm running out of time. They're gonna kick me out any second, but I have to take you through this really quick. All right, so right behind me here is a 140 inch micro LED. Now this is a business to business product. Okay, this is not a consumer TV, but if we move over this way, we have a brand new 114 inch micro LED. I don't know what this is gonna look like on uh, camera because it is so intensely bright. It might just be blowing our camera up. I don't know. Godspeed to Zeke on editing this sucker, but uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. Every time I come and see these micro LED TVs, I start looking for the seams, right? Because 
uh, though this is a unibody design, all of these panels are in one piece, right? The TV ships like this, you don't have to put it together. There are still individual modules of micro LED panels in here. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic, but um, I'm just getting started. So if we move our way over here, we have a 101 inch micro LED TV. If we go over here, we have an 89 inch micro LED TV, but guys, 76 inches micro LED TV, 76 inches. Look, they're not talking about pricing. They're not even saying that you can necessarily buy this in 2024, but it's here. This is a 76 inch micro LED TV. If we wanted this to come down to a realistic size for a lot of homes and not just be a wall gobbler, that's this TV. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen in 2024, but I mean, this is kind of beyond proof of concept. This is a 76 inch micro LED TV. Will it be under $20,000? I have no idea. Um, I have no idea what it will cost, but you guys are hungry for micro LED. I hear you. I wanted to show you this. I'm super excited about that. All right, there is more to show here. There's this transparent micro LED stuff that is just kind of mind blowing. We're gonna do a special video on that a little bit later. For now, I gotta sign off because they are literally kicking me out. Thanks for being with me on this amazing journey at Samsung's booth. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.